Sasoric, Dave Sasoric. Winter hibernation has come to an end. The month of January is over, and we're back with more Going Live with FCTV. It's great to be back, Matthew. This is episode 3.1. It doesn't even feel realistic to say that, but we are entering our third year of production of Going Live with FCTV. So. By version 3.1, Microsoft was making millions. <laughs> and I don't think we're in the same boat. Right, right. But that's okay, okay. We have a third season coming up. Um, I, I, like, like you said, I can't believe it, but uh, we have some fun things we lined up for today's show. We have a jam-packed show. show today. Uh, some really interesting guys. Two trendsetters, I would say. Actually, our whole sh our show is full of trendsetters, but we have uh, Chef Anthony Augustine, who's the new uh, executive chef at DeMarco's. We have our old buddy and one of one of the most popular going live guests, uh, Gennaro Cellural from Pompadour Salon, always breaking new ground as far as in the barber beautician world. Uh, we have a pastor who's doing some really cool and innovative things with his church and some, some great ministries. Uh, we have baskets that bling and the latest in fashion that you can get through a fundraiser here in Union Town. What else do we have? We have a ukulele. We have never had a ukulele artist on the show. This is never a first. Never had a ukulele. Yeah. Oh, well, there's, there are a lot of firsts that we're going to have in three. I, I can feel it coming. But let's talk about some of the things that are coming up uh, very soon in the area. February 28th at 7 p.m., the R.W. Clark 5th grade uh, is going to benefit from an extreme illusion and escape uh, show that's happening with tickets for $10. That woman doesn't have lower she has, extremities. No. Well, her legs are here. Her body's oh. here. So uh, if you want to see this show, hope that's temporary. I hopefully uh, if that's permanent. You're in a lot of trouble. But if you want to come see a show like this to benefit the fifth graders at R.W. Clark, uh, come out on February 28th. February 28th, 7, 7 p.m. Laurel Highlands Middle School. Ten dollar tickets. For more information, call 439-6007 or 880-7510. Uh, it looks like uh, it's it's going to be a great show. Now, uh, USCAA basketball, starting this coming week, you're going to be seeing the USCAA buzz on our channel, and it's going to be running like back to back to back because there's so much they need you to know about this national championship. That's what amazes me. Coming right me. here to Fade County. The national championship. Actually, does someone have, uh, there's a logo sitting over there from the USCAA buzz. Now, uh, the USCAA, Dave, they've been here for a few years. Yes. This is, they've been here for several years and are going to be here for a few more years to come. We're really fortunate. Um, national basketball tournament, students, as I said, from all over the country, their families, and they're going to be, you know, basically supporting our local economy, spending money here locally. So we want to give them a warm welcome, a nice big Fayette County welcome. And there's a lot of things happening with the tournament, you know, from the skills competition, which is fun, we'll be there, uh, you know, for slam dunk and three pointer competition, we'll be right there on the court you know, with our handheld camera, to, you know, the Penn State games. Penn State's men and women's basketball teams both going to be part of the big tourney. Now, uh, you mentioned that there are going to be events all week. March 4th through the 8th is going to be the tournament. Coinciding but with it. Coinciding with it is going to be the Youth Basketball Clinic, uh, part of the Fayette County Hoops Festival. It's going to be March 8th, 10 a.m. You're going to have Kurt Mattern. Kurt is uh, not just a basketball coach, but a dentist. Great guy. Uh, with the women's team, Mark Mookie John. That is like a family with basketball history in the local area. Yeah. Uh, his dad was a coach. He's a coach. Refs in the family. Um, you know, they, they know everything about the sport. But not only the local guys, but also Garth Pleasant will be coming out. He's a member of the Michigan Basketball uh, Hall of Fame with over 30 years of coaching experience. He's going to be running that. Um, Our great, young people have the opportunity to learn great from opportunities. these guys. Yep. We have so much more. Uh, but it's my pleasure at this point in time, or, or maybe your pleasure, Dave, to introduce our musical guest for today. You know, I heard her first at the PIHD, Pennsylvania Institute of Health and Technology, talent show to benefit the Teddy Bear Care Fund, which provides uh, emergency medical care to folks. Teddy have, bears? <laughs> not teddy bears, but it's actually named in honor of a dog who was called Teddy, and uh, it, it provides medical care for, for people whose pets are going through an unexpected, uh, you know, situation. Um, and that's kind of a pay it forward fund too, where right. you, you know you're expected to maybe pay it back at some point in time. And right, right, and uh, that's through the Woodlands Animal Care Center, part of Nemecol and Woodlands. But this young lady, Ohio. she she was first place. She was first place, and I think she deserved it. Uh, she plays the ukulele, like I said, our first ukulele player, ukulelean on the show, and uh, I, I she's. Don't 
know that that's how they're supposed to be referred to. But uh, <laughs> Her name is Sarah Taylor. She's joined by Mike Politis. He's another. We have Mike Politis and Michael Poli on the show today. Mike Politis is a, uh, another student at PIHT and a guitar player, both very talented. Please give him a warm round of applause and a going live welcome. Ladies and gentlemen, Sarah Taylor. Sarah Taylor and Michael Politis. Thanks for being with us today, guys. Thank you for having us. How did you uh, enjoy performing uh, your first number here today? I know you were a little nervous before yeah. the show. Did that all go away? You did a great job. Thank you. Now, you, uh, you're you new to the ukulele, is that correct? Yep. How long have you been playing the instrument? I've been playing since April 2013, since yeah. So less than a year, yep. a little less than a year. Yep. Well, that's great. Now, how did you pick up an instrument like a ukulele 
in southwestern PA. I mean, that, that seems like maybe that's an <coughs> odd instrument to pick up. Or? Pretty much hanging out with friends that play different kind of instruments. I pretty much picked it up from them. Okay. Now, did you play any other string instrument before that? No, or? I was actually a drummer. Okay. Yeah. So you, uh, you had a little bit of musical knowledge, yeah. but uh, first time to the stringed instruments. Now, you participated recently in a talent show. Yep. Uh, and I believe that's, what, that's where Dave, one of our producers, uh, found you or mm -hmm. met you. Yep. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about that talent show? Okay. Um, it benefited um, Woodlands Animal Care Center, and I was very nervous going into it and did not think I would even place, but I ended up actually winning, so it was a very well, sh big shocker. Easy to see why. You did a great job here today. Now, uh, this guy over here you br brought along with you, how did you guys meet, and how did you uh, start playing together? We actually met at school, Pennsylvania Institute of Health and Technology. You want to talk about it? Um, she was playing her ukulele and singing, and I was very impressed, and I said, i got to get out on this, and went out and got my guitar and came back, and we've been writing a little bit, recording ever since. A little bit of a jam session, yeah. and, and you started playing together. Well, that's great. Now, could you talk about... Uh, the influence of your your mother as well. Dave told me before the show. Yeah. Uh, she's she's passed away. You yep. you call her your guardian angel. Yep. I actually lost my mom when I was 11, and I pretty much use my music as a way to get my emotions out and my feelings. And I've really found that my music has changed people's lives and helped them cope with their loss. Oh, hey, you guys did a great job. You're going to stick around, play a song for us at the end of the yep. show. I can't wait to hear it. If you'll stay with us for just a few moments, we'll be back with more Going Live with FCTV in just a moment. Thank you. You've been searching for the right barber or beautician for years. Visit Pompadour Salon at their brand new location and your search will be over. Pompadour Salon is a full service salon for both men and women. Owners Albert and Gennaro Cellurel have renovated the former Pizza Hut building along the National Pike in Hopwood and transformed it into a one-stop shop for your hair. The good folks at Pompadour Salon are fully equipped to cut, color, perm, and style your hair. And they offer a full selection of top name hair care products at fair prices. Whether you're interested in a traditional or modern style, the team at Pompadour Salon has the knowledge and skill to create the look you've envisioned for years. Come and see for yourself why so many of your neighbors keep coming back to Pompadour Salon. Let the family at Pompadour, Albert Gennaro and Anita Jordan Sellurel take care of your family. Pompadour Salon along Route 40 in Hopwood where you come in as a valued client but you leave as a friend. Hey, thanks for staying with us on Going Live with FCTV. Joining us on the couch is Uniontown native and faculty at Manesson High School, Michael Poli. Thanks for being with us, Michael. Sure. Now, uh, you recently presented at the Hawaii International Conference on Education in Honolulu. What was right. that experience like? Um, it was a good experience. It was uh, pretty intimidating. There was uh, a ton of people there, you know, 1,300, I think, attendees there. Uh, 40 countries were represented, so you saw a lot of people from different countries. And, um, I mean, it was, it was a good experience out in the house to explain it other than that. Now, what were you presenting on? You, you've done some research in the past, correct? Right. I do do a lot of uh, educational research. A few years back, I had a, a postgraduate course in, uh, in professional writing. So I wrote an article a few years back. I brought it out a couple times, worked on it a little here and there, tried to get it submitted into some educational journals, and somewhere in that process, submitted it to the Hawaii International Festival, and they contacted me and wanted me to come out and present and talk about the research that I had done. Now, what are some of the key messages that come out of your research? Um, well, I'm a special education teacher, and um, like we had talked about before, before I was a special ed teacher, I was a pre-law student. And uh, just different events in my life led me away from law and towards special ed. I wanted to be able to go out and help developmentally delayed you know, children. So I, even though that is where I took my career, I still had this lingering interest in law. So naturally, uh, one of the first things that I started writing about was special education law. And the reason that I did that was because I was spending, I think the statistic is uh, when you're a special ed teacher, you only spend about 20% of your day actually teaching. So I was spending these really long spans of time working on legal paperwork. 
and I just wasn't seeing it being followed through to the full extent to, to the potential of what this paperwork had um, had the ability to do, had the ability to help these students. So that's um, sort of a long-winded answer to that. Now, we were talking a little bit about the, the process of uh, a student being given a, an IEP, you referred to it as? Yeah, um, I suppose if you're, a, if you're not in special ed, IEP, well, it stands for Individual Education Program. So once a child is determined that they can have these special ed services, there is this document written called an IEP, and what the purpose of that document is is to ensure that special education law is followed through and that that child is receiving all the services that they have coming to them that they're entitled to to help them flourish and reach their full potential. Now, Dave, you, you may talk about that at the Sunday dinner table a little bit. Your My mom, mom is does some in work. Special education, yeah, and, and I okay. know that, uh, and something that you're passionate about, Michael, is that making sure that parents and the students themselves are involved in, that, in the creation of that IEP, right. correct? Yeah. Um, well, the whole point of the paper and what, what got me the, the trip out to Hawaii was that we have these laws. I mean, parents, to educate a student with special needs, it takes about two to three times as much money as it would just a regular education student. So parents are mandated by law to be at these meetings. I'm not even sure if most parents know that, but they, they really are. They have to be there. It's costing a lot more to educate their child. In fact, uh, the statistic nationally, at least in 2012, was 21.4% of the whole nation's education budget goes to just implementing those IEPs and paying the salaries of people that are involved in that. So parents are mandated to be there. The students should be there to participate. Of all the data we have, we still don't really have anything conclusive to say, when we put these IEPs into practice, these are the results that they work. But we do have a few things along the way that we found, and we found that parent participation and student particip participation lead to much more positive outcomes. And that's not only in special education, but I think across yeah, the board, I was just parents say, getting involved. We can't even re really rely on that because, you know, obviously when your parent's more involved, you're going to do better. And when the student's more involved in anything, you know, within their own education, they're going to do better. Now, we have just a moment or two, maybe a minute or so left in, in this segment. Um, I was told just before we went on, you're involved in the making of a film as well? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously I do a lot of professional writing, but as sort of an outlet, I do do some creative writing. And, um, I, I mean, I've written tons of stuff through the years, but one of the things that, uh, that you're referring to is, uh, it, well, it started out as a novel I was working on which is nowhere near you know, ready to be published or even being considered. But um, it's called a Halloween story, if, you know, like a Christmas story, but it's called a Halloween story. If you go online to uh, a Halloweenmovie.com, there's information there. So it's already, the, the production of it, the filming, it's already started. Um, we have a lot of it cast. We are still looking for some actors locally. And if you go on to that, uh, that Halloweenmovie.com, there'll be casting information there for anybody interested. Sounds exciting. When you get into, uh, what's your release date? Do you have a release date yet for the, for the film? For the film? Not even close. Not no, even it's close? Just, it's off the ground, but we don't know what's going on. Okay, well, hey, back on the show. September, sure. October, when we get into uh, Halloween season yeah, and, and guests, we'd be happy to have you back and hear more. Sure. Hey, thanks for being right, with us. You. Stick around. Thanks we have more going live with FCTV in just a few moments. For over 10 years, the Uniontown area and beyond have been coming to DeMarco's to meet with friends and family for great food breeds and good times. That's what you'll get at DeMarco's. We have the best steaks, seafood, burgers, and salads here at DeMarco's Bistro and Cantina. So if you haven't already been here, come down and experience it today. Well, thanks for sticking around with Going Live with FCTV. Erica Miller, uh, you may be running for, like, the, the most featured guest on the show. I am. I, I am. I'm in a stiff competition, though. Monica Sweet, you're going to take, take her out? I, Listen, she volunteered to come with me tonight. I was like, huh, -uh, no, lady. No way. That uh -uh. was going to take her count just a little <laughs> yeah. bit higher. Uh, we, we joke Monica Sweet, uh, who volunteers with the State Theater and the American Heart Association and pretty much every organization that we've ever had to, on this show comes on a good bit, but Erica's been here before. Today we're going to talk about your bag and bling bash, which I was having a hard time saying before the show. It is a tongue twister. Yeah. When is the, when is the bash happening? 
It is on February 23rd at, uh, well, the doors are at 1230, but the event actually starts at 2. Okay. Now, uh, if you want to come to this event, do you have to buy a ticket in advance? Who do you call? You can buy a ticket in, in advance at the box office at the State Theater. You can call 439-1360 in the 724 area code. Um, we do have tickets available at the box office. We're open Monday through Friday, 9 to 5. You can just stop in and get a ticket. You can also just come the day of the event and um, buy a ticket on your way in. Now, give me the schedule. What happens when, when you come to this event? Okay, well, each ticket has two um, uh, chances to win on it. Okay. And, um, and when you come, there'll be a giant dessert buffet set up that is worth the ticket admission alone. It is gorgeous. Um, a lot of desserts are donated by, um, you know, local bakeries and, um, and grocery stores, and then lots of committee members and people affiliated with the theater bake and bring things in. So it's a fabulous dessert buffet. It is beautiful to see. Um, and uh, so you can eat those things when you come in. And then also, um, we have extra raffle items, and we sell, you know, uh, strip tickets to place in the in the raffle baskets. And um, but there'll be a big display up on the stage of all of the purses that are going with the bash, and and the jewelry items. And um, and so once the event starts at two o'clock, we pretty much just draw names and um, and give away bags and um, and uh, jewelry. And then we have lots of door prizes. Everybody gets a door prize ticket when they come. And, um, and then we'll call the raffle winners. We'll have a 50-50. Um, our MC is Mike Clark from WTAE, and he is um, quite a lot of fun uh, at big an event. Big fan of purses? You know what? Big fan of serving the State Theater. That's great. <laughs> and, um, but he, um, he's really fun and funny and witty off the cuff, and he, he really makes the event fun. And he has some um, surprises up his sleeve this year. And uh, so, so that'll be fun to see how the audience reacts. And, um, and we encourage you to come out. It, it really is a good time. It benefits the State Theater's general operating uh, fund. So it's worthwhile in that way as well. Absolutely. And as yeah. anyone that is part of a nonprofit knows, general operating is, is the most difficult, you know, uh, sometimes that's that's it's hard to keep the lights on. It so, is, and in the state theater, there's a lot you'd of lights. Be surprised by our electric bill. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I think this is like dress for success was on one time, and they brought uh, a whole woman's outfit that matched what I was wearing. Today, oh. I'm I'm in blue and black, and you brought so this that purse bag would suit you. that maybe suits yes. suits me. And be, uh, but gold. But goes gold, with gold goes with everything, and yeah. probably not my shoes. But you well, have some examples of bags here today. This is just some. I mean, just we some have, of them. We probably have a hundred items that are being called off the tickets. Now, and while you're while you're not sponsored or endorsed by any of the designers, you're going to have people there uh, or designers there, like Vera Bradley, right? Mm -hmm. And Coach, Coach, Coach. We have some uh, Dooney and Burks. We have some Michael Kors purses, Teganello. Uh, we have some thirty-one bags. Um, we do not have any knockoffs. Everything is a real bag. A real purse. Bag. And, um, and so, uh, you know, there's also a lot of jewelry items. The jewelry varies from being costume jewelry to 14 karat gold. There are lots of things in between. And so it's just a matter of coming and hanging out and um, having fun and winning something, potentially. Mike Clark, Helping the State Theater, February 23rd, 2 p.m., $20 admission, great dessert buffet. Yes. Anything else we need to say? Um, come and support the State Theater. We'd love to see you there. What shows do we have left this year? We have Vox Audio on March 22nd, My favorite. the day before this event. Okay. Yeah, Vox Audio is fabulous, and I can't wait for them to be back. It's an all a cappella uh, singing show, but it's more. It's, it's really more funny, than that. too. Yeah, yeah they're and, hilarious and, it, and the fun. The beatboxing of the 90s that I grew up with is. is they're doing really all did. the instrumentation with their voices, it's, so it's amazing. And, and, and they're funny people, yeah. great people. What other shows? Um, we have, in April, we have the show The Miracle Worker, which is uh, a play coming from the Montana Repertory Theater Company, a professional company that travels all around the United States. And uh, The Miracle Worker is, um, is the story of uh, Helen Keller and... Um, very poignant, powerful piece of theater. I encourage everyone to come and see that. It is really inspirational. And then we end our season in May with the show Hair, 
the musical. So has hair been there before? No, no, we haven't. Have I mean, my hair has. Your hair has. But um, but uh, no, the show hair has not been there before. Absolutely, it's going to be a great season to to end things up. You can check for uh, your movie series that you have going on Fridays. Yes, we do have a classic film series. We show one movie a month, one Friday a month, at 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. It's only $5 for adults, $3 for senior citizens or students. And uh, our next movie is in March, and I can't think of the date right now, but it is the movie Shane starring Alan Ladd, a classic Western. And um, we have other great movies coming. The Blues Brothers movie will be coming soon, and um, The Big Chill. Takes people back. Great big screen, great audio. Thanks for being with us. What's the box office phone number? One more time. It is 724-439-1360. Erica Miller, State Theater Center for the Arts. We'll be back with more Going Live with FCTV in just a moment. Woo. Come on down to DeMarco's Bistro and Cantina for the largest selection of draft beer and ale this town has to offer. Top shelf wine and spirits live entertainment. DJs and friendly service. Meet us at the Joining us on Going Live with FCTV today is Pastor Adam Lawson. Now you're with the Fresh Fire Church uh, and also, the Fresh Fire Church takes care of the Produce for People project as well, correct? Yes. Um, yeah, we, we, we actually just uh, sponsor it in conjunction with the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank. Okay. So let's talk first a little bit about Produce for People, and then we'll talk a little bit about your church sure. uh, as well. Now, Produce for People is a distribution that happens monthly, is that correct? Yes, it happens monthly. It's the second Thursday of every month. Okay. And... Where does that take place? At the Fayette County Fairgrounds. What's the clientele that you serve? Who, who do you serve through that program? Um, basically, the, the program itself is a self-declared program. So anyone who believes that they're in need is able to come. Um, you know, we, we, the goal is that it's anyone who is at 150% of poverty level or, or more. But uh, you know, if, if someone's just falling through the cracks, that's actually who we want to help. There's a lot of people who are working um, but they're just not able to afford food, so they're able to come and get food. Okay. Now, what kind of food items do they receive there? Every month it's different. Um, we try to hand out a meat every month, chicken, turkey, you know, whatever that may be. Um, Ten-pound bags of potatoes, canned food, juice, you know, whatever we have available at the food bank. But generally, they leave with about 65 pounds of food, you know, per household. Wow. Altogether, um, monthly we give out about 28,000 pounds of food. As far as qualifying for something like that, is there some documents that folks need to, to bring or to, to share with you in order to, uh, to qualify for that? Yeah, the only thing that we ask them to bring is a copy of the utility bill, just showing that they're a resident in Fayette County. Um, and that actually, that utility bill allows us to issue them a pass card, which is sort of like their Shop and Save Rewards card so that it's for our tracking purposes and, and registration. It's, and it's fast, they just come through then. After the first month of getting it, we can just swipe it and get them through the line much, much faster. Now you mentioned Fayette County, <coughs> but this program has expanded and, and actually is in some other counties as, as well, is that correct? Yes, the uh, Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank um, has this in, in, I believe it's a total of eight counties now in southwestern Pennsylvania. So it's, it happens in, in Greene County, uh, Westmoreland right now is still excluded. Um, but it's based on the, the demographics of the, each county and specific to them. Now, uh, I, I would imagine the food bank financially supports it. Is there some other financial support that the program receives? Yeah, the, the food bank, um, you know, gives us, uh, provides the food for us to give to the residents of Fayette County. Um, but that food comes out of, one, their budget that comes from the state, um, two, other organizations or Know, food companies provide a certain amount. For example, Kellogg's is a big supporter and provider for produce to people. Um, then our church absorbs like the advertisement expense and things like that, um, and other miscellaneous expenses. So there's there's a there's a lot of different people and community uh, involvement in the in the production and then the just promoting um, 
produce to people every month. We have about 125 volunteers that it takes to wow. to serve the community just that one day. And local students you involved in that? I know. Yeah, college mm -hmm. students, seniors come and do senior projects. Um, you know, even you know people that have some trouble with the law, they come and serve some community service too. So you know, children, summer months, they come and help. Um, so really, it's not limited to an age or or anything. It's, it's a great program. Now, Dave, you were mentioning you, you you were impressed about the other agencies involved. Yeah, I, I know you have Dress for Success and some other agencies to, to help people and offer them services, and you have them on hand there. Yeah. So, our, our vision for Produce to People has always been, you know, we, we want to provide them food, um, but we wanted to be able to make sure that we can find a solution to the reason why they're there. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot, of, um, a lot of people that are in poverty, and our, our idea is that, you know, in this area there, that we don't want people to stay in poverty. We want to help them find a way out. So we have um, colleges on hand to take applications or to talk to them about furthering their education. Um, there's also the community action is there taking food stamp applications, providing additional help uh, mm -hmm. and cash assistance. Um, then there's Dress for Success. You know, they're there talking to women about how to dress for an interview and providing extra help. Our church is there and we have a prayer team. and. Um, you know, a, a lot of other involvement. So any kind of human service agency is able to connect, get involved um, in a way that they think may help our community. So you're trying to meet their human needs and spiritual needs as well. Uh, through absolutely, that. Mm -hmm. absolutely. So talking a little bit more about people's spiritual needs, uh, let's talk about your, your church itself. Uh, Fresh Fire Church is local to the area. Uh, where are you located? Where can people find you? We're located right on U.S. Route 40, directly between Uniontown and Brownsville. So we're really easy to find. If you know where Jackson Farms is, we're down the road from there. It used to be the old Triple Nickel Bar, uh, you know, uh, something that everyone's familiar with in the area. New life for that building, I'm uh, sure. It was. It was. <laughs> we transformed the building uh, on the inside. The outside, we still have some work to do. But, um, yeah, we've been there going into our third year anniversary. And um, so that's where we're located. What are your service times? Uh, Sunday morning, 1030, Sunday night, 6 p.m., and Wednesdays at 6 p.m. as well. Sure. Now, you have some other ministries or activities for the congregation there at the church? Sure. Uh, we're an active church. Uh, there's a lot going on. So uh, we're really a multimedia, you know, uh, ministry. Uh, we have, you know, our own uh, internet programs we have going on. But there's ministries for every age, for children, youth, young adults, um, outreach ministries. That's one of our focuses, one of the areas we're really focusing. Um, so there's something really for every age of, of person. Well, hey, thanks for being with us. We're just about out of time. Do you have that website address uh, on you? Where can they find you sure. on the web? Yeah, they just uh, check out uh, freshfirechurch.net or on Facebook or, or on Twitter. Well, thanks for being with us. Thank we'll you. be back with more Going Live with FCTV in just a moment. You've been searching for the right barber or beautician for years. Visit Pompadour Salon at their brand new location and your search will be over. Pompadour Salon is a full service salon for both men and women. Owners Albert and Gennaro Cellurel have renovated the former Pizza Hut building along the National Pike in Hopwood and transformed it into a one stop shop for your hair. The good folks at Pompadour Salon are fully equipped to cut, color, perm and style your hair. And they offer a full selection of top name hair care products at fair prices. Whether you're interested in a traditional or modern style, the team at Pompadour Salon has the knowledge and skill to create the look you've envisioned for years. Come and see for yourself why so many of your neighbors keep coming back to Pompadour Salon. Let the family at Pompadour, Albert Gennaro and Anita Jordan Sellurel, take care of your family. Pompadour Salon along Route 40 in Hopwood, where you come in as a valued client, but you leave as a friend. Well, Fayette TV viewers, welcome back to Going Live with FCTV. Gennaro Cellurel, you've been on the program before. Yeah. No stranger oh, to uh, yeah. no stranger to our guests at home. Uh, Gennaro takes care of our, our hair, although it's probably been about three, four weeks, maybe even more since I've been in, so I don't know if he'll claim mine today. Uh, but Dave and I, he normally takes care of our hair. And uh, since the last time we've talked, you've been up to some exciting things. Oh, yeah. Now, you, you drug Dave and I out to Pittsburgh, and, and we did this Major League Barber Battle event. Right. I, I've never been to anything like that. Why don't awesome. you describe it for our guests? And, and that's the overall point to it. Never seen anything like it. That's what we're trying to bring to this area. Um, as you guys know, I was fortunate to study under some great educators and whatnot, 
network out of the city, like in New York, just all over, you know. And I got to meet these guys, the Major League Barbers. And our goal behind doing these barber competitions slash hair shows where there's education, we call them a barber expo, is to bring the trend here to this, to this part of Pennsylvania, you know, to keep us up to date, not just for the consumer who goes in and gets their hair done, but for the, the stylist and barber too. We're trying to bring that up-to-date image here. And that's basically what we're focused on in, in bringing the most up-to-date, um, advanced education as possible. And, of course, competitions, you know. There's a whole world of competition out there, and it's so much fun between barbers from all over. And that's, that's what we're trying to do and make, it, make this barber industry and hairdresser industry a big thing here in, in, in Fayette County, and not just Fayette County, the whole Pittsburgh area. You know, I don't, I don't want to say anything about any, uh, any barbers or beauticians that are out there, but, you know, we, you used to have a salon where every woman came out and they had the same perm. Right. You know, they all came out. Every right. guy came out. Cookie they, cutter like They effect. looked like yeah. they were signing up for the Army. You know, they, <laughs> had, they had two haircuts, a number two or a number three on the clipper. Yeah. Um, you guys are trying to change that. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's funny because everything comes back around. It's like, it's like cars, you know. You have an old 1970 uh, Camaro. You know, then you have a 2014 Camaro. You know, it's still a Camaro. It's just up to date. So we're seeing, like, stuff from the 60s and 70s coming back around, and our goal is to just give it that edge, that up-to-date edge. But it's still the same stuff that was being done years ago. You know, and we're just trying to perfect it and, and stay up-to-date with it. I, I want to say um, that a haircut is so important. You know, and that's one of the reasons why we're trying to do these competitions and classes. You know, and, um, you know, you, you go to the mall and you buy a T-shirt, you know, and you spend all this money on a T-shirt, you know, or, or any type of clothes. You might wear it once a month. You might wear it mm -hmm. if you really like it once a week. You know, but a haircut you're going to wear every day, you know. And you hear people always, man, I, I wish our mall had this store or that store, you know, because it's up to date. It's what's in trend. And that's what we're trying to do, bring what's in trend to this area. I feel like the haircut makes the man or the woman a lot of times, not yeah. only in a sense of how other people view, but how you view yourself. Right. And, you know, it, it gives you that sense of confidence, sense of feeling, you know, clean and fresh. And, yeah. and that really is a, is a mood booster sometimes. That and the, a good experience conversating with your hairdresser That's or right. barber always, That's always is therapeutic in a sense, you know. Always a good time when you walk yeah. into Pompadour. It's, you know, it... it that's the biggest thing, and, and maybe the reason why I don't get out there as much as I need to, mm -hmm. because when I go out to Pompadour or, or to get my hair done wherever I, I was getting it done, you know, I want to take some time. It's, it's more right. about that experience exactly. than just getting the job done. I, it, it's not a drive-through car wash. No, and that's, that's exactly what we're trying to present at an affordable cost, too. I, I know a guy in New York City. He charges $1,500 for a haircut. And I was telling a lady about this today. I'm like, I know this guy. He charges $1,500 for a haircut. And she goes, w what is he using, like gold scissors, you know? <laughs> he and only said, cuts two heads of hair a month. It's the, exper it's the experience you pay for, you know? And that's what we're trying to sell even more than your haircut is, is the experience, you know? And, and like you guys know, you know, it's a very friendly, uh, family-like vibe at our salon. You know, that's what we try to offer. And you guys have expanded past just the haircut. You know, n number one, you're, right. you're going to do a wash and you're going to get people ready yeah. and then you're going to do a great cut. But in addition to that, you guys got some other people out there. You're selling some, uh, selling some product now. Yeah, we have a lot of, well, we're actually offering this month, we just started offering some really cool product deals. Um, we got this new, new thing for men, and it's, it's not seen much around here. It's called the, a Beijing treatment. And it's for the guy who wants the fuller beard, the more high-definition lines in their, in their hairline. You know, It's a really cool color treatment that we're offering. And then for women, healthy hair is always going to be in trend, if we're talking about what's in trend. It's always going to be cool, you know, from forever. And we have these new treatments that we're offering, these Alapui treatments by Paul Mitchell. It just gives the hair life back again. So, yeah, we're always trying to find something cool that we can offer and make that experience, you know, worthwhile. Fantastic. You know, it, it does, it makes you feel like a different person when you've got a good head of hair. Yeah. Gee, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Go ahead. But, you know, we, we had a, a pastor on the show just mm -hmm. before you, and we were talking about a great program he has produce for people. So I'm going to make a deal with you. Okay. And if the pastor needs us, I'd love to go out on a produce for people day mm -hmm. where people are coming out and there's yeah. human services. You cut some people up. Oh, yeah. Give them a free cut. I'll, I'll sweep do. the floors for you. Uh, Can we hey, do that sometime? You got a deal. Pastor, you, 
Yeah. Good idea. <laughs> we'll, we'll bring yeah. them out. We'll, we'll have a great experience and, I would and love get, to make do that. people feel a little better. Sure. Uh, I'd love to do that with you, Jim. And it'll be awesome. We'll do some cool hairstyles. Like you said, we're doing the, the portrait designs now, so we'll do... We're going to do a portrait design of your face and his face and a haircut. I've been saying we're going to do this. We're going to do it. So I saw you did one with JFK. Is that yeah, right? we've done a lot of the presidents and whatnot. So. For people that don't know what this is. Right. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, there's, a, there's an explanation behind it. What I'm able to do is I'm actually not a drawler, but I'm able to take a face of some kind, and I'm able to take with my clipper all freehand and put this portrait into the back of somebody's head. So people will ask me, even other hairdressers, why, who wants it? Why would you do it? I don't care who you are, young, old, whatever. If you're in line at the grocery store and there's this boy in front of you and he's got JFK's face in the back of his head, you have no choice but to say, excuse me, who did that to your hair? <laughs> <laughs> so there's a marketing scheme behind everything. So that's why we're doing that. That's great. You know, and, and that's something that's, that's hot in some of the urban areas. We, oh, yeah. we saw whenever we uh, went yeah. up to Major League. Yeah. And Major League is, is a magazine, correct? Major League is the original barbering company. It's a company that produces the different type of haircuts and, and also clothing lines. But Solid Gold Magazine is their, basically their partner in, in, you know, with the magazine as well. So when we went up there, we saw a lot of styles oh, yeah. that haven't made it down here yet. Yes. And, and, but you go to Pittsburgh, you're starting to see them. You go to New York City, it's you're going to see them every single day. We're going to New York. Um, we're going to be going to New York next month, actually. To, and that's why we go, to see that, to bring it back here. But it, it's, we're trying to bring it here, and hopefully it catches on. You know, It's fun anyways. <laughs> so, um, you know, we talked a little bit about the things you have for sale at the mm -hmm. store. Uh, you have some designer merchandise now? Designer merchandise, yeah. We have different purses, different, you know, it's a whole look. You know, um, when I look at a head of hair, I, I look at so much more. I look at the bone structure of the person, you know, and even the way they dress and whatnot. So we're trying to, like, throw that into the mix as well, I guess you could say. So, yeah. So, but not just that. Dave, you have a T-shirt from Gennaro. I, oh, I was yeah. going to mention right? uh, Gennaro's dad. Right. Another great guy, Albert, was supposed to be with us today. Yeah. He's a little under the weather. Yes. But uh, he does, I, I don't know what he, what he calls this, but it's a whole line of inspirational T-shirts. Yeah, he does a whole line a of few. different inspirational T-shirts. Like we were talking in the beginning of the segment, we were talking about how, you know, there's no better feeling than sitting down in the chair and basically talking to your hairdresser or barber in a therapeutic aspect. And my dad has took it to the next level and putting different positive sayings on T-shirts, you know, and not just for consumers, but for barbers and hairdressers, too. He has it geared for them, too. So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Nice little hobby. So let's talk about some of the, the, the fun people that you have out at the salon because yeah. that's, that's one of my favorite things when you go yeah. in there, and, I, you know, and I'm spending Characters. half a day. I, I try to bring G something like donuts, but then his bodybuilder brother, I don't, I don't know that yeah. those are on his, his menu. Right. Tell us about some of the people working out there with you. Well, my brother's starting to work with me now. My brother's in the process of getting involved into the barber community, and he's going to our, – our goal is ultimately to build him up enough and get him educated to the point where we can um, expand our business and, and put out a, a pompadour too, you know, a second, second chain. Um, we also have my right-hand man, Mike. Um, and Mike's basically, you guys see, he's my right-hand man, you know, he helps me with everything. And Mike got some honors recently, I think, right? Mike yeah. did. Mike actually won the Pittsburgh Barber Competition, and I did not judge. He won fair and square. <laughs> I tried to get him to come on here with his trophy, but he, he was too shy. You know, my favorite 10 minutes may be when I, Mike shampoos your hair. Oh, it's and a wonderful And we talk experience. about your golf game. <laughs> yeah. You know, he says, oh, yeah, yeah. have you been here? Have you? Big golfer, Mike. Oh, he's a big golfer. Who, who else do you have working out there? Well, listen, we can't forget. The boss, my wife, that's um, the, that's the president, course. you know. Um, I, I'm the owner. I just write checks and, and keep things in order. She's the boss, you know. <laughs> so, and then, of course, my father, who inspired me to become a hairdresser, my aunt, and um, uh, my, our friend Jenna. So it's a big family uh, business. And um, Oh, and my grandmother, she's also 70-some years old, and she's working every day. She works harder than the young, the young kids in there, so, so something else. Keeping things going. Yeah. What else is new? What's the next thing that we're going to see that's new in the hair industry? You're going to see, basically like I was saying, you're going to see stuff come back around, okay? For men, I The bowl cut? Yeah, I, actually, you're not far off. We're seeing <laughs> pompadours, and a pompadour okay. is like a wave on top with it real tight on the sides, a lot more length on top. This is a 50s hairstyle that's coming back. Very popular. It's a professional look. So Women are doing it now. Women are going more on the lines of a bob, an edgier type of bob, not okay. what we've seen 
early on, but more of an edgy, a natural effect with women's hair. And also, for men, a very business-oriented look, which seems to be the big thing now. So, professional, like you. <laughs> what, what about the fades? I tease Dave. Dave will go two or three days without shaving. Mm. He'll be in the office, you know. But sometimes when you're a television producer, right. you, uh, you're, you're not on the camera. You're behind. So he's talking to our sponsors. He's yeah. talking to people coming on the show and lining things up. And he's got this Grizzly Adams look. And then, <laughs> then he'll shave, like, part of it. Do you remember when we did the show at the shop? We, we shot it there, and we're like, we, we can't even start until we cut no, Dave's Dave, hair yet. Can we, we please can cut, cut your hair? Cut his hair, so, yeah. You know, taught me a little bit about the, the Miami fade, which is, uh, you know, one way of shaving, right? Uh, but uh, is that what it's called? Which one? What, the Miami fade. That could be a new trend. I don't know if I've heard of that. <laughs> Dave, Southside well, fade. Southside, Southside fade. fade. Dave <laughs> does the New Salem fade. I it's Salem completely fade. different. Or my, my mom calls it the Punxsutawney Phil shadow. The yeah. Punxsutawney <laughs> Phil shadow. <laughs> So. so shaving, that's something that's new. It's coming I, in. I brought you a gift, actually. Um, Did you really? This is, this is a razor. A good friend of mine actually makes these razors. His name's, he owns Palestine Scissors. And this is a straight edge razor. And you and I have been joking around about straight edge razors for quite some time now. And I got you your own straight edge. Now, if he comes back on the show next week and his face is cut up, it's not my it's fault. It's not your fault. But we're trying to get a movement of a good You know, clean... I, I tried, last time I was in, you gave me the, the disposable. Right. And, you know, I tried, it worked pretty well. You look it's, good. It's, uh, it's not too no bad. No scars, so. Dave, no, no help for him, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but sh you know, shaving, that's something you guys, you, you guys will do. Yeah, we like to shave it. It's, once again, it's something that's not done a lot, and it's an experience. You know, you sit back with a hot lather, and it's, it's an experience. So Absolutely. What are your hours? Where can they find you? Oh, man, I work like a wounded dog. It's I my know. hours. No, <laughs> um, our hours are we're there every day from around 8 to 8, you know, sometimes later. However we can accommodate our clients, we will. So if we have to go later, we will. Um, and then, of course, on the weekends, we're there. But with the exception of Sunday, we're not there. So, Telephone number? 724 uh, 439-0618, and that's Pompadour Salon. Hey, guys, one of, uh, one of my good buddies, I like to go spend an afternoon and get my hair taken yes. care of and, and, and just feel good about yourself. Yeah. Gee, thanks for being Thank with you. us. Thank you very much. We'll be thanks back so. with more Going thanks. Live with FCTV so. in just a moment. <laughs> For over 10 years, the Uniontown area and beyond have been coming to DeMarco's to meet with friends and family for great food breeds and good times. That's what you'll get at DeMarco's. We have the best steaks, seafood, burgers, and salads here at DeMarco's Bistro and Cantina. So if you haven't already been here, come down and experience it today. Thanks for staying around. One of the most popular uh, parts of every episode is when we have a food demo, you know. And, and we do a lot of different kind of demos. One time, uh, Chef Mario threw me out there to dance with, uh, with the dancers that were there. Uh, but food is, is probably the most popular. And with us today is Chef Anthony Augustini, the executive chef at DeMarco's Bistro and Cantina. And you have not been there uh, very long. You're pretty new. No, actually, they, uh, they just picked me up about a few months ago. I was just out looking around. Um, I just moved up to the area again recently, but I'm from around here, and I was just looking for something part-time that I could take care of my son, and when I walked in, he said that they were trying to make all these changes, they got these 40 drafts, and they're trying to pair them with the food, and I showed him my resume, and I said, well, that's kind of right up my alley, I really do love beer, I've probably tried over a thousand different styles in my life and continuing to, uh, especially thanks to this place now, and he's really letting me go all out with the menu, so he kind of let me take their core menu and just make some minor changes to it to kind of make it a little bit more modern and uh, add a few things to it to, you know, kind of give people what they're looking for. You know, when you see on TV, whatever they're cooking there, I want them to be able to come in, the foodies, if you will, and eat my kind sure. of food in the same manner. So let's talk a little bit about you. 2003, graduate of Laurel Highlands High School, uh, went to Le Cordon Bleu in Pittsburgh. Yes. Then you went down to spend some time with the mouse. Yes, I, um, I left straight from culinary school, was accepted for an internship with Disney, where I've worked at some of the finest restaurants in Disney, including at the Grand Floridian. I worked at Victorian Alberts, which is a five-star, five-diamond restaurant. One of my favorites down there. I'm a Disney fanatic. Uh, uh, love make, it. make a trip every other year or so. So Excellent, excellent food. They got to teach me a lot about, uh, you know, uh, fine dining plate ups and literally just starting out part of my job was taking a piece of asparagus this big and putting on a plate passing the plate down <laughs> to places that are that you know extreme to where everything's got to be pieced out and you know hundred some dollars a person and you just eat whatever we feed you it's a set menu so so Mickey wasn't the only person you studied under you were at Universal Studios chef Emerald Gossi if you know 
uh, television chefs. Oh, yeah. You're, you're probably going to know him. And the thing that's cool about Emerald is I worked at a place called Chop Chop. It's actually inside the World Pacific. It was Island American Fusion. And, uh, I mean, we got fresh tuna in on dry ice flown in from Hawaii. Uh, Emerald actually does take every one of uh, his restaurants once a year and comes and runs the hot line or the hot plate, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, you know, kind of lets everyone feel for what it's like to work in one of the, you know, more upscale restaurants in, let's say, California and New York where you got that pressure going. So it was really nice to have that experience as well. So uh, he, he kind of puts your feet to the fire. Out of everyone you work for, who maybe is your biggest inspiration or, or who do you draw the most from as a chef? I would say the person that I've drawn the most from is a guy named Rolf Nedersheim. He is actually a master chef, which there are only 80 of those in the world, wow. probably about 30 in this country. Now, the, the smell, uh, I, I think it's probably from the, the pasta you have here, is just taking me over. So we have some more questions, but I want to talk about the food. Yeah, let's talk and, about the food. And I want to try it. Yeah, that's what I'm so, here for. So let's talk about the dishes you have in front of okay, us. Okay, so I brought two of these dishes um, because I think they signify what my restaurant or what we as a restaurant are trying to put out there to the public because we want to appease to the foodie people, which is like my generation where we're trying to make things a little fancier. So I've got a whole rack of lamb. It's New Zealand lamb that I use fresh herbs to marinate like rosemary and thyme. And uh, I got a lamb, yam fritter, which is pretty much smashed up yams or sweet potatoes. And then we season it up with like amaretto and cinnamons and sugars and then deep fry it. So you get that crunchiness, but the smooth, sweet taste in the inside. And then the gaminess, but the herbs of the outside. So you kind of got like sweet, salty, crunchy, savory all together. And then there's a berry compote in front of it, which kind of pulls the gaminess out of the lamb, which is what most people don't really care for when they have lamb. They have, you know, domestic style, which is a thicker rack. New Zealand style is a smaller rack. It's a little less gamey. Then there's the other side of that. Whereas, for example, Tuesday nights we do spaghetti and meatball night where you can get two meatballs, a side of spaghetti, garlic toast, a side salad, and ice cream dessert for like $8. So we're also trying to touch that top of community. But the thing is, is that no matter what we do there, I home make the meatballs to order that day. The lamb is hand cut to order. The steaks are all hand cut to order. We have a steak night, a crab night. Everything in house is fresh. Marco's owner, Jared Volick, was telling us about all the fresh vegetables that you're yes, bringing absolutely. in and using and everything. That's so. what I brought in a whole lot of. Uh, we're doing everything homemade now. Um, I'm cooking into the season. So as we go through the different seasons, you guys will see different specials come out. Uh, he wants to experiment with some sushi dishes and other things in the summertime when we start getting fresh. Uh, so your menu is going to rotate now. It's the, not It's not the same old menu the, that's going to be there forever. The core menu will be there forever. So the things that people come in for, like the hand cut steak, the crab legs, the you know the different pasta dishes. The pasta that we're getting comes in fresh. It's not frozen. It's not dry. It's cooked to order. So all of our pasta dishes are fresh. We make all of our sauces in the pan to order. So there's nothing just like out of a bag or anything. Everything is fresh at this place. We really want to try to tap into that like meat and potatoes part of Uniontown that we're trying to grasp with like the really nice big hand cut steaks. So for example, on Wednesday you get a 16 ounce steak for like maybe twelve, thirteen dollars. So that kind of appeals to that side where people can come in and you know still get a hearty meal but at a reasonable price. And then you have the weekends where I'm doing things like veal salt and boca and pork so pork also buco and I did some Wiener Schnitzel this weekend. That's kind of what's going to start to rotate uh, along with the vegetables that I have in house will rotate throughout the season. So like I did Brussels sprouts or I might get in rutabagas or radishes or turnips. In the summertime I might go for the little lighter side of things with just like broccoli or summer squashes or do like little tuna and swa salads and, and kind of start moving towards the more summer lighter fare. Now Jared admitted to us whenever we did a meeting the other day uh, to talk about this upcoming interview, he used to buy frozen vegetables. Yes. That's a big no-no with you. Uh, well, there's a lot of things that whenever he uh, told me what they were doing in their kitchen, it kind of set me back just because of my experiences where I come from. I come from a place where you know the food is prepped on a daily basis and it, it takes a little bit more work and effort, but at the end of the day, it's a better product, and that's what's going to pull people to my restaurant is the fact that I'm there every single day at 1 o'clock or noon or however early i got to be there to make sure that everything that is ready to go for the night shift, you come in and get a fresh meal. So you won't have anything frozen. The vegetables are all fresh. I make sure they know that by rotating them so that they can see I'm getting different stuff in. Our mashed potatoes are homemade. All the yam fritters, the side dishes are all homemade. The sauces are all homemade. I make a fresh soup every single day. Now, I want to go ahead and try this, if that's okay with Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Why don't you tell us a little bit about the beer items that you brought, because you're doing pairings, and, and you have one of the biggest, probably, tap systems in Uniontown. Yes, we do have 40 drafts. Um, one of our big pulls to our restaurant are the different micros and import beers that we get, which are, again, like I said, right up my alley. I've probably had over a 1,000 different beers, thanks to the restaurants and the scenes that I've been in and out of. Uh, what I brought were three of my favorites, actually. Uh, these are all local. Great Lakes is local from uh, up Ohio, near Erie. Right? Yep. Okay. And, well, it's Ohio, but it's, I mean, once you get up there, right. it's all kind it's of all hazy. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Trogues is actually located right next to Hershey Park. Good I've stuff. been there myself. The brewery is excellent. The reason I brought this Mad Elf and this one, because I wanted to pair it with the lamb. 
They're stronger beers. This one's about 9%. This one's about 11 When you have a gamey meat like that, you want something that will also kick that game. The alcohol content will help with that. And then the berry compote goes with the sweetness of the honey or the cherries in either one of these. The Festivus is still kind of sweet. It's from Full Pint. Um, we carry a lot of their stuff as well. That's something I wanted to bring on the little lighter side. It's, it's still malty. It's got that nice crisp taste to it, but it's a little sweeter and clean, so it'll go with something like spaghetti and meatballs. But everything on our menu, a good bit of it has a beer pairing with it, and if you get the beer that's paired with the item, you get a dollar off the beer. I also do beer pairings with all my specials, uh, so that's something to try out too because I try to make it. It's like a wine pairing, and beer is actually getting to the point that is, is most or as much complicated as a wine. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see these different aromas and flavors and colors and styles of beer coming out so that Absolutely. we can I actually had the, I had the opportunity two weeks ago to be up at Erie Brewing yes. uh, where, where they make some great beers and to get a tour of their facility and uh, man it's it's a lot more complicated than you'd think and it's it's a lot closer to wine making than I, I right thought especially it was. when you add in like the wort and when you start you know dealing with yeasts and sugars and fermentations it's really really close to, to wine and that's what makes it so special is that there are so many different things that you can do for it that just the smallest little tweak gives you a completely different beer. And that's where I am with my food, is that there's so much food that you can do with it, but just that small little tweak gives you so many different foods. I'm going to pass this over Thank to you. Dave. You can go DeMarcus ahead and try that one. does have 40 beers on tap, right? Yeah. At least yes, so. Yes, and we also got a collection of bottles as well. And you rotate those seasonally sometimes? Yes, so. all they rotate seasonally, especially the micro beers and the imports. We try to keep on, but the micros we uh, rotate seasonally. Mm -hmm. As for right now, we have the Mad Elf. We'll be rolling into Nugget Nectar and the different ones that come from Trogues. Same thing with the Great Lakes, but we, there's a couple of those that we always have on, such as the Edmund Fitzgerald. Uh, we just try to keep it. That way it helps to go with my menu. So as soon as the lighter side of beers start coming in, I can start cooking with the lighter size of foods, and we can start pairing those. Right. Now, I mentioned our buddies over at WMBS that, that do uh, Just Cook It. This is their year of Twitter. They're going big on Twitter. You're going big on Twitter this oh, year, he's too. He's blowing me up. I'm on all social media. We're on Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter. Um, pretty much anything else that comes along, Jared's been very, very good with keeping that up to date. I post all of my specials on there. We know what the weekend specials are by Wednesday. If you're on Facebook, at DeMarco's Online, uh, we also post pictures of all those specials, what we're going to be doing for the week. So if you're not sure, you know, just check our Facebook, and if you don't have a computer, check the newspaper, because Jared also calls the newspaper every Wednesday, tries to get something put in there for what we're doing for the weekend. So that way people, I want people to have something to come in for. I want them to see something in the paper and be like, wow, I want to go get that this weekend. And have Union Towns try to start trying, like, a little bit of a different fare of food, if you will. So when you're in the restaurant, do you come out and, and mix and mingle with the, uh, Absolutely. With the clientele when you're able um, to? It's a really close balancing system because I am there to cook. Um, I'm the head of a kitchen. I also have three other guys that I work with. They do very, very good work for me. Um, we work very hard in that kitchen to make all the food come out and look the way that it does. And they have the same mindset that I do, that if the plate's not perfect, it's not going up in the window, which is great because that's really hard to find. However, at the end of the night, once it starts winding down and I know the kitchen's going to be okay if I poke my head out a little bit, I do like to walk around and make sure that everyone's enjoying the food. I take all kinds of feedback, you know, positive or negative if there is that. Um, that's what I'm here for to make the restaurant better. So if there's anything that we could change to do differently, all the feedback is welcome. It's just really nice to be in a place that they're really letting me do my side of the plate on the menu. Awesome. Fantastic. Welcome, thanks, thanks for being with us. Thanks for being in, back in Uniontown, hometown boy coming home. Uh, great food at DeMarco's. If you haven't been there yet, uh, stop over and try it. Stop over and meet Anthony. Uh, talk to Jared. He's around every once in a while. And, and, and just a, a great restaurant to go and, and have a nice meal at a, at a good price. You always see someone Absolutely. you know at DeMarco's. Yeah. Absolutely. And things to look forward to. we got Valentine's Day coming up. We're doing like couples menus. So if you want like twin lobster tails with twin fillets, we're also going to be doing a game pairing menu where I'm going to get some very extravagant meats in such as venison or boar or bear or elk or antelope. We're going to try to get a couple different things and then pair them with these crazy heavy beers before the winter kicks so that I still have a reason to have winter beers on draft. There and then go. as soon as that's done, we'll start shuffling in the summertime. But those are things to look at that are coming in the future. Like I said, the specials change every weekend, and I'm always trying to do something that's fresher in season, try to keep it modern and up to date. Hey, Chef Anthony, let's put our hands together for him. Thank you, guys. And we're going to close out with another tune with our band here today. We'll see you later on Going Live with FCTV. What does it look like in heaven? Is it peaceful? Is it free like they say? 
Does the sun shine bright forever? Have your fears and your pain gone away? Cause here on earth it feels like everything good is missing since you left.